Hi guys, I just thought I'd do a quick little video on our newly installed drum anchor winch. At the moment we're cruising from Limeburners Lagoon in Geelong to Port Arlington on a pretty windless but beautiful winter's day uh, on the electric that I put together for the Kimberley's trip. The Kimberley's trip had to be cancelled because of uh, the Northern Territory border being closed on the day we were leaving and then the South Australians closed their border and shortly after all our land permits were cancelled so we had no choice but to cancel the trip. Hopefully next year we'll go, uh, although it's not looking that promising at the moment, but you never know what might happen. Um, so in the meantime, we'll do, do this little video on our drum anchor winch. Um, I've been meaning to install it for quite some time. I'll talk about some of the tricks and tips that were involved in getting it installed correctly and uh, overcoming some of the problems installing it on our uh, RL28 here. Uh, that might be useful for installing it on other boats. And also talk and show it being used and some of the tricks and tips uh, involved in actually using it correctly as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. So this is my Viper Pro Series 2 1500 drum winch that we're going to be installing in the RL28. Um, starting to get a bit hard to pull the anchor chain up so I figured it's time we got a anchor winch. Um, the winch can, is one of the biggest ones you can get, suitable for 8 metres and upwards and it can hold 100 metres of uh, rope and 10 metres of chain uh, which comes with the winch, although you can use your own of course. And then you have the big box that contains the drum itself and the smaller box there that contains the motor and gearbox which very simply bolts onto the side of the drum. So to start off with we had to organise the nose of the uh, RL for use with the anchor winch. Um, the, anchor, the anchor bracket itself we've had on the RL already was quite suitable so that didn't have to be changed. The anchor, the anchor winch came with a really nice um, heavy duty swivel so we'll be using that with the uh, sliding anchor that we've got here. Um, other than that we put a bigger bash plate on for the chain knocking against the fiberglass. We've put the eyelet here for locking the anchor down when we've got the anchor pulled in so we'll have a shackle between the eyelet and the anchor to hold it in place as, an emer as a safety backup uh, locking device. We had to change the position of the mooring cleat here because there's a lot of clearance issues in terms of getting a big rope over it so we've now got room for a, an inch and a quarter rope to go over that which should do most moorings. Um, the anchor winch came with an uh, anchor roller here which is to keep the chain from bashing against fiberglass and feed the chain and rope into the anchor winch nice and neatly. Uh, so that's all been bolted on top of the bash plate we've got and it tidies up the nose nice and neatly. Um, so that's about it for the nose section and eventually it all will all sit like that. The anchor bracket was modified by adding an upper roller that still allows self-launching but stops the tip of the anchor hitting the bow of the boat and damaging the fiberglass when launching. So the anchor winch itself, uh, very robust unit, it's the most robust unit uh, we, I could find on the market. Um, it consists of 8mm plate there, 6mm plate on the drum, a 32mm solid shaft in the middle so it's very very well built. Um, the, the assembly for the anchor winch is very simple. The motor unit here, the motor unit here simply bolts on with four bolts and it can be positioned in that direction upwards or to the other side. So it can be rotated in, you know, in three different directions to fit the anchor well to, to suit the purpose. It has three leads uh, coming out of the motor. The positive is attached straight to the battery and the two negative leads are used for forward and reverse to uh, attach to a uh, reversing relay. So you can actually make them obviously play the winch out and play the winch in as required. So the next thing was to try work out how we're going to fit it into the uh, RL's anchor well cockpit at the front of the boat here. Um, originally I was going to get the motor and uh, tuck it in under the ledge under the front there and have it pointing forward to give you more room out the back but the motor is a bit big and it didn't let the winch sit neatly forward in the cockpit so I've decided to have the motor out the back now and uh, this means that the winch itself can be as close as possible to the front leaving plenty of room out the back to still have work area, an area to work and store things in. Um, 
it shouldn't cause too many problems because the motor is still quite a long way under the uh, side here and we'll end up adding conduits uh, and protecting things for the uh, cables so that uh, it will be protected from being stepped on. Next job is to make sure that our winch is um, at right angles to the nose of the boat and also parallel to the bow roller that's been installed. To do this we put a straight edge across the front of the winch and we measure from the base off the base off the bow roller to the front of the straight edge. It's 15 and a half that side and it's 15 and a half that side. So that's perfectly square to the nose and parallel to the bow roller. All right, so now we've got the hill holes drilled. We need to countersink the uh, holes to provide a ring around the bolt of silicon that will help seal the bolt into the deck. And we do that simply by using a slightly larger drill. Next step is to liberally apply some silicon to the holes and around the base plate. Um, making sure you use a marine grade silicon. Uh, the marine grade silicon is suitable for salt water applications and constant immersion and all that sort of thing. So we always like to really pump it into the hole itself, even though it gets squashed out the other side. And to also apply a liberal coating around each hole. Repeat it for all the holes, of course. All right, next thing we'll do, is we'll put a nice bead of silicon around the outside to help seal water coming in and also to keep dirt and rub other rubbish from getting underneath the base plate of the, the winch where it just collects and makes a bit of a mess. I also like to make a, another ring around each of the bolt holes just to give it another sealing section around each bolt hole. There we go. So I've got a, a really good application of silicon especially around those bolt holes and those countersunk areas and now we're ready to place the winch on top to get the winch in position without smearing the silicon too badly there we go alrighty we can put some bolts through I like to apply a little bit of silicon in the countersunk area too just so it, the bolt drags some of the silicon through into the hole so it doesn't take too much of the silicon out of that countersunk area underneath the plate. All ready to now put the bolts in and tighten the whole winch down. I only put them in partly to start off with to make sure they're all going to go in okay. And of course there's going to be silicon on the underside of this and we'll have to clean up a bit that squeezes out from under the plate, but that's all ready to go tightening down now. Because of the stresses involved, I decided to uh, weld an extra arm onto the plate that goes on the underside of the cockpit to spread the load of the winch. Um, because there'll be a twisting force on the, on the winch itself, I thought the arm will spread the weight a little bit more across the uh, reinforced section of the cockpit um, and avoid any damage. Working with silica is not my favourite job, but it's essential material to seal boats up. We can now put our plate on. Alright, so we've got the plate in place. We've got someone holding the nuts and bolts on the other side. And we'll do these up with quite a bit of tension because they're sandwiching the, the cockpit floor there. And we want to make sure it's a good seal on the under, or should say under the winch so that we don't get leakage into the V-berth here. So that's the base plate uh, bolted on nice and firmly. Um, the plate that I welded on forward will spread the load and we'll be putting a stainless steel cross member in the cockpit well bolted through that to give it extra strength uh, so when you get the torsional strength on the winch it won't cause too many issues for the fiberglass. The relay for the anchor winch system, uh, the main relay is housed in an electrical box that is bolted and siliconed to the back of the anchor well here. The cables go in through uh, waterproof glands at the front and exit the back of the box 
in a woodproof location into the uh, cabin of the boat and then led down towards the battery where the circuit breakers and other switches are. The cables that come out of the box are protected by an electrical conduit which go into an electrical box that has been added to protect the outlet cables from the motor. Behind the winch we have bolted a cross member stainless steel 32mm stainless steel bar across the cockpit floor, the anchor well floor. It is bolted into the additional plate that was welded onto the bracket on the underside that bolts the whole system down. The bar on either side goes to heavy brackets that are bolted from a gusset on the hull to the top of these bars which are also bolted through the bottom of the anchor well uh, to make the whole reinforcement nice and strong to avoid any excess flex of the uh, anchor well floor. Behind that, under the rim of the anchor well, there is an electrical box that houses the uh, another up and down switch, manual switch for the anchor uh, winch. It also provides enough room to uh, put the electronics for a, ch a simple remote control system that uh, you can readily get off eBay. Um, relatively waterproof because all the buttons are well uh, sealed buttons um, and it works very very well and from that box to any point on the boat you get very good reception and very good control. All the heavy cable from the control box in the uh, anchor well is routed through the uh, front of the V-berth here. Double sided tape was then applied to get a nice straight line with the cables across the fiberglass face in the V-berth uh, which stuck the cables onto the wall quite well. The sort of uh, double sided tape we're using is that used for artificial turf so it's waterproof, weatherproof and has high uh, stickability. The control cables and the uh, power cables will then all go through a square conduit which has been glued to the uh, side of the hull using high strength silicon and that then gets routed through the rest of the boat through cupboards and lockers and such to the circuit breaker uh, back towards the battery system towards the rear of the boat. After finding a path through all the uh, seat cupboards or the seat lockers through the boat for the main cables and the control cables I located the anchor which circuit breaker uh, close to the door but just inside the boat where it can't be knocked easily. Uh, it controls both the anchor winch itself and the relay control system that controls the anchor winch and the relay control system is also run through the circuit breaker or through the fuses on the switch panels so that uh, they can be turned off independently and they have a fuse should they have a short in the system so they won't damage or cause a fire. Uh, the control cables run through the lockers outside into the back of the boat where it's conveniently located anchor switch uh, to raise and lower the anchor so that uh, when approaching an anchorage, especially when sailing solo, uh, I can lower the anchor while still in control of the boat. Uh, similarly, I can have the motor running and have everything ready to go and raise the anchor and then motor the boat straight off from the anchorage should it be a windy day or a, a tight anchorage. With the installation complete, it was time to try out the new anchor winch. Note the new convex deck roller that is needed to help lay the anchor line more evenly across the drum winch. To drop the anchor, position the boat upwind of its, in, of its final spot by the intended scope of the anchor line. Drop the anchor and feed out until you are confident the anchor is on the bottom. Put the boat in reverse, feeding out the anchor line until the desired scope is reached. Make sure you don't get overruns on the drum by, by letting the line out too quickly. Continue to reverse once finished to make sure the anchor has set properly. To retrieve the anchor, keep the boat's moat running, but keep the gearbox in neutral. Retrieve the anchor until you are confident it is well off the bottom.
Reverse the boat and finish retrieving the anchor until it is back on the, in the bow bracket. Reversing spins the anchor around so it pulls up the right side up into the bow bracket. This may vary with different types of anchor but works well with my Manson Supreme. 